Actually, uh, uh, let, let me start our discussion. First, I wanted to say the most important part is that, that what I will tell about here does not relate to big film productions, because the whole concept of Film Spring is directed at young people who are to um, furnish their future. And the drama of many, many of them is that is that passing that exam, which is making your first project, it might be a, a TV show, a short form, a full feature film. Uh, it's important to note a few phenomena here. It's worth note that people who after many years and many attempts make their first film and this first film is a flop quite often disappear from the from the map of cinematography because nobody is willing to invest money in them again on the other hand if we look at the Mm, lives and biopic of bios of many uh, famous directors, none of them, there's non, not a single director who, apart from great films, did not make a flop. Films which were plain bad or did not meet the expectations of the, um, of the audience. It's, it, it's worth to remember about that because we're living in a world which is in its foundation an unjust world where S certain elements uh, which are unjust play a huge role, role. Where you, the place where you were born, you're, if you have rich parents, it's one of the reasons which follows us, has been following us in Film Spring Open from for many many years. Is to what is a permanent uh, phenomenon is that the career is made by by those who can afford it and those who cannot uh, have it much much harder. So, za ile robimy, so the fact, uh, the question of how, how much do our films cost, how much money we spend for it, and how the film is made, is a decisive factor. I showed yesterday, yesterday the making of from the last year, and I would like to want to show those of you who weren't there just a part of it. Part of it. It will be just a second. I just, I just wanted to, 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 to start with, uh, with this part just to um, and get us in the mood and I wanted to talk about cinemas because it's uh, related to a certain concept of filmmaking and with, without any doubt it could, especially in small projects, reach the thing that you can see written on the on the slide here, how to make films cheaper and better. Because this is not a problem to make a film in a cheaper. Because it's enough to, to save money, like on, on such elements in our work, which are, which are important. So this saving of money should be organized in a wise way. And this whole production concept consists in, in the shortest possible time, within the means that we have at our disposal, to give the director a chance to tell to, to, make, to tell a story and make a project in the shortest possible time, because time is money, as we know. And talking about, well, however, talking about time, I wanted to give you a f few examples which, which show that we are using, managing time, especially young people, in a way that is not uh, uh, wise, not, it's not smart. I was a, a part of the jury of, um, of, um, in Gdynia festival, 
and the the scars by the scars was considered to be the best film of that uh, festival. She got this award after two months, and she she sort of. Um, she invited me to a coffee. Of, of, of course, I told her it wasn't my decision. Uh, she, but the whole jury. But she told me a story that at some point she uh, got, she, she was out of money and uh, Zanossi interrupted the production and she had suicidal thoughts. But after some while, uh, this money reappeared, thankfully. But what's more impo most important, she, me meanwhile, during that break, saving her s s emotional uh, life, she decided to edit it, uh, the, 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 the footage that she had, and she d came to the conclusion that many things that she was her in, in her initial concept do not work well. And she started to write a slightly different script, and the film that was finally made was the result of this break. Eva Puszczyńska was with her with us a moment ago, and I would like to remind you that Ida was made exactly in the same way. Due to the change in the weather, because there, there, was, there was a snowfall, or there wasn't a snowfall, I don't remember exactly. Pawlikowski, while editing what he uh, Mm, shot, he came to the conclusion that not everybody that he planned works well, and he changed a lot. And that he created Ida, which got the Oscar award. I wanted to tell you that in the cinema, I'm not doing that uh, anymore, but Woody Allen did films like that. When he was producing his films, he planned in advance that after two, three weeks he will send his people home. So he had a planned break, which was not included in the cost of the film. You would, they would give, uh, they would give back the cameras to the rentals, um, the red house, rental house, and it gave him a chance to rework the script and to check how this film is being made. I will be coming back to that later, because this is quite a dramatic problem on the production, the modern film production, the thinking, smart film production, uh, should think how this complicated process, I'm talking about the independent films, because this is what we're talking about, uh, individual independent films, how to help the author to improve what is being made. It is an absolute fact, and I can tell you that out of my own experience, I did 70 movies in my life, that the majority of the movies is different, to a bigger and smaller extent, uh, is different than the script that was the original grounds for the movie. The, the work of art has its own life. We are uh, sort of helping in the delivery of that process. However, the art, the work of art has its own life, and the role of the uh, author, of the creative director, is to find it. The most important element, which I will underline in what I will be talking about, is the fact that this revolution that took place, moving from a, from, a, from a film to digital, from a physical film to digital cinema, was not revolutionary. This movement, this shift, was sort of almost unnoticed. Some very sh shrewd uh, producers of the of the equipment, for example, Arri, when they were introducing new cameras into the market, they rightfully noticed that it is stupid to make a revolutionary from the beginning. You have to make a camera, which is a digital camera, but everything that is related to that camera with certain habits of working DOPs has to be the same. This process caused that 
I'm not working on the film set, but I'm still hearing anecdotes. And I, we still deal, have to deal with habits which are stupid and they are just historical. And it's worth to think why it's so. Talking about the psychology of the filmmaking industry, it's worth to... As those of you who's been here during my opening lecture, this is my obsession, this, this lecture, or this, this picture, this, this stupid cue. Um, this is something I'm obsessed with. This, they hear the millionaires, and some of them are dying. Uh, they're standing in a queue on this sort of hill because from the perspective it's a hill and it's like a huge queue they, 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 they go up to make a selfie to take selfie they go down and take and uh, post this photo on, on Instagram this copying what what relates to our job I sort of drawn it into a certain mm, sort of a closed um, form the birth, life, and death of a filmmaker. The filmmaker, this is here, Sławomir Mirjak, is born. Um, was born in film school. Here I has two girls uh, beside him. Film school, unfortunately, is a institution like any other institutions. It educates you for the world of yesterday. In my, I was taught. I graduated in 1968 of the last century. I was, they taught me, they taught me for five years black and white photography, and my first film was uh, was in color, and this incredibly important uh, technical change. You can see that the, the schools do not have the lectures because if somebody is good, he's working in the industry and earns a different money, and very often in different schools. I'm, I'm not criticizing only Polish schools. I also lectured in many schools, and I and I can. See see that it is so. Of course, there are better schools and worse schools, but there are also schools which are built on idiotisms, idiocies, and they're, and, and they're backed and they're supported. First of all, the school rejects the basic rule, which is the understanding of the core of the profession, of, of an artistic profession of a filmmaker. The difference between any other department of uh, of artistic creativity like uh, literature music is that the investment to perform that sort of music is very small the writer is it is necessary to have a laptop or a piece of or, or a pen and a piece of paper and for a musician is an instrument for a painter maybe some paints but he can also draw with a pencil or on a, on a computer screen so this is no money at all. However, film education and work in a film, for that you need an investment. That changes considerably and structurally the fact that film school should allow within those five years or maybe four years. There are schools which teach you over three years. The schools should allow young, a young man to answer the question, who I am, who am I as, a, as an artist? Which message do I have to share with the world? What sort of audience should I have? The film schools, in majority, if not all of them, they forget about it. They forget that it's a different sort of, a different form of art. That an artist who in a film school would not get a chance, who he is as an artist, later behind the walls, uh, outside of the walls of that school, has no chance to test it because he gets this huge payload on his head, which is the money. Uh, Eva was talking about that extensively. I have no idea about money. I don't really remember what VAT is. For me, it's, it's an abstract thing in, in, in some sense, but this money is a, is a fact and they're necessary, and this is a barrier. It's a huge barrier. Uh, that's why there are so many psychopaths in Hollywood. Is that for, for a psychopath spending four million, three million, 
uh, it doesn't it, it doesn't matter and they don't care if somebody criticizes them I've, I've dealt with that and I know that a certain character mental characteristic helps you with that sort of career among others this misunderstanding which is very important and it pertains to all of us because we earn as much as we do and 100 zlotys and a million zlotys is a huge difference for us and film schools for, forget about that then you get into a very dangerous very dangerous um, period which is a waiting room it's a devastating period young filmmakers run from door to door with their scripts their role is not to play the, to, to, to write the script their role is to promote the, the common director is for professions. First, the, he's a scriptwriter because it's much more difficult for a young person to bring a script from somebody. Because quite often it ends that if a pro producer likes the script, he's very willing to. He's not really willing to risk with a young filmmaker. He's looking for somebody somebody else for this script. And if it's my script, I, he can't give it to anybody else because he has to have the rights from me. So it is quite often that we have the the, the they are the directors, the script script uh, writers, and they're also promoters because there are too many of them. I've been lecturing in many schools for for years, and I did uh, like statistics from out of my own interest. Who out of my students will make a career? I started to lecture in during the martial in Poland, but I started to lecture in Finland. And according to the according to those notes, the career um, is made not not by those who are talented, but those who can manipulate others, those who are good in advertising. That's why a wise producer system should also find and pick out those who are sensitive and leaving the thick skin for the production because this allows you to to attain a lot to achieve a lot the problem is different the problem is that over those years in the waiting room they go around and they talk they retell the story, retell the story and at the during the first shooting day it's not their be beloved bride it's they're really ready to um, divorce their idea they do not have heart for that anymore he doesn't know know what he's talking about anymore. That, that is why young directors are running away, they add new things. Because this is the charm of novelty. That's why they're shooting a lot of things which are not the backbone. They're not the motor. Because they do not have this fresh attitude, this fresh approach to the story. Because they are they are overfed with their own story. Waiting room is a, an extremely bad time for the author, for a for an for an author. Love at first sight is a very short spell. Film is an act of love. And the first movie, we'll be talking about that a lot. Quite often, by the means it is being done, this is what I told you a moment ago, I will not fo focus on that anymore. And yes, the prince and beggar. We believe that films can be made in a different way and you can spend the money in a more in a smarter way. It's good to think how it all works. This camera is a camera which my my sister was using still in the year 2000. She used that to make uh, to take photos. In the 1970s, an artificially inter artificial intelligence control drone looked like this. this it really takes like it's it, it all takes place in the blinking of, of an eye this all takes place very fast and this way of producing 
it, the technique has to influence the way uh, we're doing we're making films Natalie Portman is a he, she's a friend of film spring open and the idea of film spring open we I, I talked about that yesterday I will give you some details so that you know as producers how with simple means you can uh, ensure you have a producer. The adaptation that she did of the book by Amos Oz, which is about 500 pages long, bardzo dużo tego, co ty w książce było. No, za dużo chciała w to wpakować. Mało tego, mało tego będąc bardzo ambitną osobą, wymyśliła sobie taką strukturę skomplikowaną, pełną, to, to, to było zapisane w olbrzymiej ilości flashbacków. E, e, ja też flash forward. Niestety nie wierzyłem, że coś takiego e, może zostać zrealizowane. Krótko mówiąc, ten film już nie, w ostatecznym efekcie nie ma żadnych flashbacków i, i flash forward, a metodą taktyczną, którą e, osiągnąłem e, w jakiś sposób to, co stało się na końcu, było to, że powiedziała mi, e, e, że oczywiście uważam, że to jest bardzo interesujący scenariusz, ale trudno, żeby od razu na poziomie zdjęciowym ona wiedziała, gdzie będzie przecinała danego okresu, danego okresu, że może wygodniejszą formą zapisać ten scenariusz technicznie jako jedną płaszczyznę czasową i da dużo większą swobodę później przeskakiwania tych czasów. Ja mówię, tego ty nie musisz robić, poproś swoją asystentkę, jak nie to ułoży po kolei, bo będziemy kręcili z pewnymi zapasami, bo ty ty masz, bo ona oczywiście to napisała nacięcia, że tu tnie, a nie tam, tak? Żeby so that you, you get certain bookmarks. That was one thing. It was a film made, of course. It was, uh, it was an Israeli production crew who didn't want me. They didn't need me for anything. And when they heard I made Harry Potter, they were sort of climbing up the walls. So they were deeply against me, and the first thing that I demanded, because I knew that she's a producer and director and she plays in that film, I knew that the last thing I can allow is to, to show him her some proxies or no color corrections, ma, ma, no, not color correct material. So I demanded that Łukasz Baka should come with me, who was coloring uh, on the set. She doesn't have film education, she doesn't understand much, much of that, and apart from that, these are emotions. Color correction, you might not want to get into that world, but it's important that color correction is done during the movie. The producers get used to a certain look during the um, process of production. I will just give you an idea, uh, a story, tell you a story with young parents uh, who are, was just born, and they, they hold like this little monster and say, look, this is so beautiful, it, it has your face. I mean, but they love it. It's, I mean, every director who does the, the most horrible shit, they love their films. There was a Polish director who said to, to, to his people, with, with these people I would put the nation to their knees, and Kazimierz Kutz answered, when they get up of your, of your they, when they get, get up uh, from their knees and they hit you in the mouth, you will never be able to get up. Well, he never, well, that was his idea, but it, again, it didn't work. The, the, the second thing we did in that movie, I really fought for that, were the locations not to be distributed all around Jerusalem, which was a horrible struggle with the set designer, but to amass them in one place. Because I quickly calculated that just the transport between different locations will eat up a lot of production time. We'll have just losses. 
That's not the only thing, and this is related to my other mother, my other demand. I said to the production that I can do this only under the condition that there will be one more DOP, one more cinematographer, so the second camera. But because that's how much I wanted to uh, to get, and I wanted two, three more cameras, which we were to um, to operate myself, so like crash cameras. I brought one myself. I know perfectly well, um, after making so many films, that a young director is not convinced what he, he needs for editing and he always wants too much or she and that's normal and that's uh, actually justify uh, such a young director does not have their own language their, their own experience we can sort of uh, she uh, got wiser and she kicked out her editor and she got the guy f f f who worked with her on Amelie and he decided to, to edit in Tel Aviv and he had he had to go with Tel Aviv every week and she kicked out to, uh, him too and she made a mistake she needed an editor on the set just to see how this gets edited that a director who does not have a film school I knew she would want more and I knew in the advance that she would want more so finally they, uh, they hired the building they, they rented a building and they allow, that allowed us to get built everything inside and I thought every time that to, to be able to do all the shots in her direction because she was always necessary. And if we didn't finish the scene uh, until, let's say, until lunch, after the lunch, we still moved on to the other scene, and the, the DOP, the additional DOP, was left with the with the rest of the actors and was and made what was lacking because we were in the same building. She could watch the same shots and she could make a lot of a lot of repeats, a lot of uh, doubles, and we were moving on. I've never managed in my in my in my life working with a, with a beginner that on the last day we had nothing to do we went home you're a producer maybe you did some films I don't know if anything happened like that to you that the last filming day there is no idea to shoot anything more because everything was shot everything that she wanted it didn't come to my mind either And these were like small steps and small tricks that tips and tricks that allowed us to to make the production on budget. The director was satisfied. She had the best proof, uh, and the best proof is that she w came to us here later. Quite often this money, and this is only not only the problem that r relates to Poland, but all the ro all the world. Is that copy? It's it's because people copy American way of working, American software. We always copy something, not re re realizing that we're copying a system which is medieval in its heart. In America, the, the trade unions have a very strong role. The revolution, the technological revolution. Well, of course, it takes place very slowly, but it's impossible. What I will be talking about in a while is the first, uh, the, the first director's assistant is of course no assistant, he's an additional um, employee of production. Now I wanted to tell you something, that show you something that I will talk about uh, at length in a while. I'll show you, could you dim the lights please? I wanted to show the film about the cinemas that we've built. Cinemus to jest małe studio filmowe, ekonomiczne. Chodzi o to, żeby dać młodym ludziom szansę na to, żeby taniej produkowali film. Cinemus powstaje dzięki wielu partnerom. Mamy szczęście, że spotkaliśmy się z ludźmi, którzy pokochali tą ideę. Cinemus się pojawił na plenerach 2015. Była wielka uroczystość, wzruszająca. Akurat tego dnia gościem naszym była Natalia Portman. Z 
Nie, bo to jest pojazd do produkowania filmów, a na planie on służy zarówno do podglądu reżyserskiego, równoległego montażu. I chodzi o to, żeby film zmontować w się udźwiękowić, żeby zrobić podstawowe efekty wizualne. Polo kolekcja ma być też miejscem, gdzie można zrobić akryzację aktora. A jednocześnie jest w namiocie sala wykładowo-projekcyjna, która pozwala na wyświetlenie już skończonych prac, czy to po planie, żeby zobaczyć zmontowaną scenę, czy już w okresie postprodukcyjnym oglądać różne wersje montażowe filmu. Ja siedzę przed komputerem, który jest zasilany energią solarną, która tutaj na dachu tego pojazdu została zainstalowana. Nie jest to wystarczająca ilość energii, żeby, żeby używać do reflektorów, ale już cała postprodukcja, komputery mogą być obsługiwane za pomocą właśnie tej energii. Będziemy szukać też innych, nowoczesniejszych jeszcze rozwiązań, aby energia, którą poświęcam na realizację filmu, była oszczędna, żebyśmy nie wyrzucali niepotrzebnie pieniędzy, ale przede wszystkim nie zaśmiecali naszej planety. The idea of Cinebus was to build a, a vehicle which I observed in, in different versions because it's not something I came up with. There are two such buses in Iceland at a lower technological level. Uh, in the United States there are those which are related to individual departments, mainly camera and all this D2 department. They also make uh, laboratories as cinebuses. So, the majority, we took an extensive time to build 3D models to divide the, the inside of the bus into the individual departments so that it's used for different purposes. This had to relate both to conflicts that are between individual departments as well as the transportation of the equipment. We're building a lot of those models, discussing with many of my friends and heads of departments, checking the uh, equipment lists. So as you can see, it is not so that somebody just came, a handy handyman divided all that, but we had a lot of thought about that, about logistics, about the possibilities that can uh, allow us to make a film, a, a small film of course, a, a, a small scale film, it's not for big films, I do not care for big films anymore, I care about young people who are starting out and for small money have to make a small movie, a good film. And we've, and we've managed to have this bus ready after a lot of hard work. It transports everything. On the top of the bus you have this big tent, 7 by 10 and in the truck you have the uh, generator and a lot of additional uh, space for additional equipment, like two additional tents that are uh, set up on the uh, courtyard here and the other one in front of the cinemas. Chairs, etc. Et and this division inside, this is what it looks like. In the top left corner, you have the actors part uh, with the possibility of taking a break. It's like a social, or you can divide it from the separate it from the rest of the bus. These black um, curtains here, you can you can put uh, like a artificial wall wall there and. Uh, you have one makeup stand, and as you can see, coffee, etc. The second part of the bus is the top right corner. These are ed these are editing, color correction locations, and director's preview, which I will show to you in further um, slides. The bus has a sort of a scene on top of it. This will relate to promotion and the antennas which uh, allow to, to transmit the, the video. And th this is the inside of the um, tent. This can be a 
a warehouse of anything you need. You can build the decoration, you, ha you can uh, put up green screens. And the advantage is that you can put it next to the main uh, filming location. You're looking for the, the, the main object and support it with such a tent. And you have a sort of an atelier where you're making your film. I will describe that in detail later, but this is a space that can be in post-production and production and warehouse and uh, the screening room and the projector is of course in Cinebus. Another thing that has been astonishing me for, for many years and which is are the there, there are three basic rules which are related to modern production in general. The one is risk management, the control of risk, agile manufacturing, and lean and green manufacturing. The, these are the three elements which are, well, of course, they are represented to some extent in film production. But the, but the analysis from the point of view of, of production, when you d take these three paradigms of production, I haven't noticed them in um, film production. It, of course, it differs from country to country, but nobody uses that. You have to remember that the producer's uh, profession is a local production. I started my um, DOP education when I started to make films in different countries. And I ended up in the United States. And I noticed that what you can see on the screen is always the same stuff, a film, a better or worse one. But the, the way of producing films is different in every country, and nobody studies that. And, and when you enter the production, you have to learn. I have to know that in England, this, the grips and, and constructors are two different departments. And in the United States, I can't ask any gaffer to get me any sort of a, of a film, a foil, because this is the, the job of grips. A lot of stupid solutions everywhere. This is not important for us, because if they want to spend uh, money, they have enough money to spend. The problem, however, is that nobody, because there are also good solutions, and it's good to use them. I brought to um, Ireland the like towers, which were very easily fo foldable. And there was a man who would come to the set, and I didn't know what he was doing. There are like thousands of such people on the set, and suddenly he he was a health and safety guy. I said, no, 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 there is no um, approval, and these two towers, which are uh, which costed a lot of time to to well. He was sort of a, a problem. He he made a problem with those towers. I will be talking about that in a more detailed way. How I understood risk management. What could be the savings? You probably know that company. A person who came up with this concept. Microwave in London. It was, it's a micro-budgeting, micro which is a company which is uh, copied in Polish films in a way which is hilarious. In PISF, it's, it's only about giving you less money. In her case, it was a whole system. I don't want to get into that. I will not talk about money, as I promised. This is a very small film of... Uh, Parking. 
So this is the, so this is the parking of a small film production in the United States. The film I did, I made. A crew. A crew. Not that's not the whole crew. This is the, the, the this is uh, this is the King Arthur. Just the people who are on the set. The other part is not there. There are small people on the other side. I just put in Babushka, the Matryoshka, in, in this picture here, just to make you realize that these are people who do who many people do the same work with no sense. Behind uh, those, in here you can see the wall which costed 11 million dollars to build it up. It had 1.2 kilometers. It was five meters high. Sorry, sorry, seven meters high, five meters wide, and uh, it was built in a, in a in a valley. It could be seen only from the top. It looked like like a two meter fence because everybody knows if you if you want to film somebody to look tall you have to film from below not from the up so you could not even film the scale of that you only the especially that 200 the last 200 meters of that wall were behind the forest and we've built something which in small movies allows above all to transport the equipment but it gives certain limitations for about the film crew and now we're getting to to the risk management this is a very important thing and it's very important to think about it the whole risk control when it comes to film production is based on the script this is the barrier where you make a decision we give the money for this or we don't give money for this it's either funding or no funding of course you're producing mood boards and other elements different commissions are convincing you to look even closer if this candidate for this who who is going to use up those millions is it worth it but we all know there are great scripts and you can get shitty films out of that and there are also scripts which are when I, I remember when I read when I read the scripts for some really great films that I loved I, I said wow uh, if I were to judge the film by the script I would never make it films are visual and there are no tools which allow us to describe the film which is poetic for example such scripts disappear somewhere in the uh, in the process and they work very well I don't know if you remember because it's a the, the film the Amélie the, the La Vie d'Amélie Poulain it was, uh, I mean, if you if you wrote it down uh, in a script, it would be 500 pages. Every producer in the United States would throw it into the bin. So the first thing you have to think about it. This is also your life. You have a script, you like it, but your imagination uh, as a producer can be much different from the directors. Because in reality, what how how we make this script decides about whether this movie is good and that it was so at some point that the script was a financial decision it resulted, it resulted only from the fact that there were no other means and other solutions because there weren't and right now there are like thousands of, of possibilities used in different ways in the United States they do prefaces they usually make this uh, there are several companies in Los Angeles which animate the prefaces why animate because you can exaggerate prefaces is also a financial document so you make a preface to convince to get more money to get more production space so apart from checking many things apart from testing out many things also this the seams between what's the second crew on what is visual effects and what is actions with the f first cast such form of preface of animated preface functions very well it is also a very good financial document because 
when in Harry Potter. I directed this camera a bit upwards. The cost of this would be much more costly. The cost of this shot would be much more costly because in I would have to rework this the set design, and that's that all comes back da down to the costs. So making animatics and storyboards makes you a slave in a way. You you have to. My freedom is only within the frames of storyboard. I can't do much more than that because this is the money for which I'm responsible. Previs today, an actor's previs is a, an opportunity to control the risk. Why don't do, don't people do that? Because young people are afraid that if somebody starts offers them making a previs or like taking actors and making some. Things at some things at home without uh, set, without the set design, without costumes. That this will not be liked by anybody, and he will not, and they will not get the money for the film. Of course, I believe that prefaces is just an internal document, a certain contract between the producer, the director, and actors to. So that what they do would, if, would in effect give a better tale. The majority of movies of young people is too long, time controlled. It's very difficult to require from a young person who makes short films to, to have this feeling of time control. Me, as the director, uh, the um, lessons of flying, flying lessons, I, I made this film for, for in 4.5 hours. Nobody told me. Nobody told me that I should control the time on the set, and I was sitting eight months in the editing room to to, to shorten it. And, but this is how I, how I was shooting. This version was always better than the shorter versions. Time control is extremely important because you save money by this on things which are unnecessary. The previs also allows you to to define to sort of define the proportions between as I told you, young directors they follow they are charmed by the novelty. They are more focused on additional subplots forgetting a bit the main plot which is the emotional engine or the emotional train of the or the story emotional drive it also ref I will talk about it a bit later but it came to me now that I made a film in Ireland in a v with a with a very talented um, female director, it was her debut, and she had the first director assistant. There's nothing, not, not a bigger lie than the first director assistant. This is production, of course, as you know. He's, he's in the um, economical supervisor who oversees the director and he's keeping to time. So the set, is, the set was done in such a way that she was, she, she was given a lot of time for subplots and additional things, and she didn't get enough time for the, for the important things. And the important things were planned at the end of the film, and this killed the film, and it killed her. She never came back to filmmaking. She's still a very well-known director in, in the opera. She had like a star, all-star cast. The film was not very bad, but the expectations were much higher. It cost a lot of money. And the stupid film set, the, the planning of the film set, caused this film to be not really good. If, we, if we're not controlling the film on the set from the editing perspective, we, we're losing the sight of the sense of it overall. I'll tell you a dramatic story to show you even more how important it is. This is a, a picture of me. With, with casting director and Kishlovsky before one of the films. The story is, of course, a sad one, even though we are happy. We seem happy. The commentary which applies to the fact that when we were shooting, we shot a lot less because the we had one camera. And you should shoot with many cameras. This is a lot of saving. And 
that it also impacts the narrative of the films. This guy in, in binoculars died in glasses, he died. He died because of bad production system. Kieślowski, through his exp directing experience in the documentalist's work, work getting into the feature film, he, he understood what I told you before, that the true work of art has its own life. And he might be coming up with great scripts, but the films are different. Uh, every film that I did, they are much different from what was put in the script, like really seriously different. I can't get into the details because we do not have time for that, but if you want to hear that, I can tell you that anecdote later. And Kieślowski, because during that time there was no possibility to to uh, work on the set after 12 hours on the set because we were, because we were shooting for example in Paris where you had a, uh, like an hour to drive to the editing room he would edit overnight like, or during the night and he he would sleep three four hours a day uh, and he made three films one after another in such a way editing on the set so without a sleep for three years and no heart can survive that. So, so his heart failed, and he was killed by the system. Of course, the, the films, his films could be worse, and he would be alive. All these films are different from one another. The Blue, for example, was a psychological drama, uh, like a detective psychological drama. It was a story that a journalist, step by step, unveils the, the fact that Jean-Louis Binoche is composing music. The, fin the final version is the operatic uh, movie, and the journalist, which was one of the key the uh, character was then rejected in the uh, in the uh, uh, rejected from the final version. The, the first version, you will not believe me, but it was so bad I could look at it. So the ability to edit on the set is a necessity to secure risk management. Uh, to some, some extent, limit the losses. Having a previs in the beginning. This premise not only serves to get oriented that maybe this role is more important or that role is more important. I made a film, the, the director, about Severin more than Christina. Andre says, this is not a film about Severin, it's about Christina. And we started to come up with the idea, you know, the directors, uh, uh, sorry, the the conductors, the important conductors would come and we started to discuss how to direct this scene towards a different actress or a different episode. She was an episode, she became the main character in that movie. Vaida had those possibilities because he could allow for himself for many things. When we started to do the, the wedding, we started from the finale and after that he came to the conclusion we were filming the final in Trostov. He said, "Now it can't be like this. We have to do it uh, uh, in chronological order." We, we, he made a break. We, for a month, we were waiting uh, for the redesign of the set, and we started to shoot everything anew. Right now, you can't do it like that. At that time, you were on the on the state money, and you could do it, uh, could work in a totally different way. The control of how we work, having previous, allows us to judge if you're editing a given scene after completing the shooting you can judge this scene not as a a lone island an individual island but you put this scene in the premise you're judging this as a whole see the, the making of of gladiator you can see that there's a, a, an ingenious scene of execution in that making of i'm really i really get goosebumps when i watch it and that and the, the journalist asked why don't didn't you put it in the film and he said really it's called says, it's not my story so this, this is still an ingenious scene, but it did not function in the film as a whole and we on the set this is how we judge things we judge scenes because we do not have the whole. This premise gives you a certain chance to judge. Of course, 
these are worse without, worse without the, the set design, but you can see certain things. I will remind you, talking about different systems, is that in the Anglo-Saxon system you have an obligatory reading rehearsals. Why don't we do that in Europe? They are sitting there, there's always a script writer, and after the reading, even the Harry Potter, you know, it's like an in industrial film. They do the same stuff. They s the script writers are s listening to people, and after the and after the reading is over, they remake the the script. They're sitting behind the table. They do not. They, they just sit behind the table and just go through the whole script. They read it out. If you want to secure your life, if you want to your professional life. If you want to have a better guarantee that what you put the money in and your time in and your career, pre phasing or attempting or so rehearsing. Um, for example, Tomek Vasilevsky, his, uh, his, his uh, film in, in my bedroom. When we started working there, we made two screenings, Fabitsky and In Bedroom by Vasilevsky. Love by Vasilevsky was not bad, well, but it was like nothing special. But in in, bedro in my bedroom was uh, an ingenious debut. Vasilevsky's film costed 70,000 polizlotis. It was his private money. And, and the film Love was 3.5 million. So even if he, let's say, it was, it would cost, let's say it costed half a million. There is a difference between 3 million and a half million. Why did he manage to do that? He had 13 shooting days. For a few months he was rehearsing. Hours and hours, wine, food, the actor and the actress were rehearsing and rehearsing, so finally when he knew what he wanted to do and he gets a certain level of emotion, he could allow himself for a very quick spending in money and the realization and the pr production of the film and he made something really good. This cinema that we've created allows you to control everything at once. As so far, the, a certain excuse for production for a parallel production or a post production, we opt the post production to be a part of production. That this should be parallel as processes as much as possible. This resulted from the fact that there is a certain flow in this. You have to first to edit, to then color and add visual effects. This is not how it works now. Now you have software even free of charge software, like freebies, in a there's a great color correcting software, which is which gives you a DaVinci 18. You can do it at the same time. You you do it in closed dins. Somebody, if somebody's editing and then coloring. Uh, you do not have to really work out things yourself. The, the software does it for you, and you can do it online. But the important thing is for those people to be at the same place because they have to communicate. You can have a creative team. On top of that, this material straight from the camera, from the set, gets into the bus through the signal or on, on the ca the ca by the cable, and it's edited on the spot that, so the director did, does not come to... Uh, Certain shots, certain shots which are but it worse he watch he watches an edited version of the film and then he knows if he needs an additional shooting shot or a, does it not it's also risk management so he's watching not not a raw material he watches something that already has a certain atmosphere because color correction adds atmosphere and mood i was in a, a commission committee which was to select the polish film for the oscar and there was film about Vaida and... Mm. Oh, yeah, the after sights. After sights. And every, we were all giggling because they didn't yet finish the post-production and we could see all the time the actor with the blue arm and the blue leg. 
you can't watch things like that. You cannot verify an invalid who has a blue leg and uh, this, this doesn't, it functions as a comedy and it, should, it was supposed to be a drama. So the possibility of making such basic visual effects is extremely important in emotional assessment of the material. We have only one emotional apparatus, we can imagine certain things, but this is how it works. Yes, yes uh, the radio signal, this is all, this is at the HD level, but already they are better in the middle of the bus, you have a part for the directorial, directorial screen with roller blinds and curtains. You can put it also out, take it outside and put it on the set. The director is watching at this and it's edited simultaneously by the editor. So, after, so in 15 minutes after the, the shot is made, he can see how it's edited. Right behind his back, of course, I would like to invite you to visit Cinebus, but first I want to tell you, the, to talk to you about it. Behind his back is the sound engineer's station, because very often this sound from the set requires some minor correction. Something is too loud, something is too, too soft. And this technician or assistant or a sound engineer who's recording has to be able to manage this. This is for uh, the basic recording of the film. From his window he sees the screen. Of course you can do a Dolby Atmo here, but you can do some basic recording here. You have the screen, you have the projector and Pro Tools, and you have the possibility. You have the possibility to to make a preview. I will talk about the transportation, about the actors. I've already mentioned that this is the part. Which is, which is a camper for an actor. It's a very, it's very comfy. It can be totally separated from the rest of the bus. The entrance would be straight only for the from the driver's seat. It's a quite an intimate place. It can be reserved only for the actors. You know, coffees here, etc. And equipment transportation. That was whole logistics. We we built different um, trailers, different systems. Here I showed this picture to you already. This stand, when it's uh, erected, you can you can put a lot of big elements on the top of this bus. The whole um, transportation capacity is two and two point five tra trucks. This is how we assess that. These are side drawers. You do not have to look for things. Everything is, in, is visible in there. The bus also has a lift to, and if you want to enter with a dolly or something heavier, you do not have to get up. Just so we, we have a lot of carts, which are special purpose, and they go left and right. Also, you can get into certain logistics, not what you always have. Uh, uh, on the set, you know, um, fight for the best parking position of your truck, who is more, most important, who has which cables, etc. We wanted to think about it. Inside the bus you have uh, you have foldable um, tables, and, and this you can put this equipment uh, there because you can fold the tables, you have a huge transporting space, not to talk about these um, drawers or pits in the, on the floor where you can put cables. And this is the tent I showed you from the top. But, but this tent, we thought about it, it is so that this bus has to serve different sets. So the tent cannot be put up in five minutes. For this you need, well, it cost us, I don't think, three hours to put it up, but if you, if you have skilled people, you can put it up in two hours. So this is not something from one day to another. However, the bus can drive from one day to another, wherever it wants. And in the evening, it docks in, in, in the, where, you, where you can see the word film, there's a projector. At, at the end of the day, it docks to the tent, and we're ready to to screen what we filmed and on the screen not on the small screen but on the large screen especially if you're doing a cinematic film it makes a huge difference quite often we had the situation 
that the actors were judged on the small screen and then the, 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 I saw, I've made this German film uh, the, the director saw the, the actress he, he loved on the small screen and he kicked her out after a week and he had to pay a huge indemnity for that because he suddenly realized that on the big screen she doesn't function well as or as he wanted promotion the group that you represent we related to with with Piotr Woźniak I know Anya Woźniak when he was young she asked me to talk to him because he wanted to be a film producer I said this is the worst choice you can make be anyone but being a producer in this country it's horrible this is an absurd for you to be I this this was my advice as you know it was I was wrong but you have to say regardless of the, that the Starak Foundation is founding this group you have to say also that it was a very talented engaged creative producer but his biggest talent was the ability to promote of course he had a fantastic background but these are there are people who have background and and money but they do not have the talent and the spirit as he had and this promotion differed in in such in a way from a standard promotion that it started when you only when the US only started talking about the, uh, the the project, and I think this is extremely important. It's good to think about different ways of promoting, and we've equipped that bus in the abilities of streaming, and the editing of the streaming of streamed f footage is done in the bus. We have a lot of we have a lot of cameras like this. We have. A, you can have five smaller cameras so that during the making of the film actor you can build the a website that is necessary to promote as quickly as possible Will bring, will bring you back it will it will give you a double return on investment I know that you can't think about it but if you make your people aware we even make the uh, we made an app of selfie TV for mobile phones but of course we do not have the money to update it so right now it, it, it is obsolete the idea was that the participants could download this app and they didn't have to do anything they had this downloaded and when they started they started recording with this program automatically these files got into the hard disk in the bus and it was enough for somebody to to go through it and delete some shots etc. they didn't need to do anything they just pressed it and whatever they they did uh, on the set was made only especially for promotion effect so y you have a Wi-Fi network uh, in the bus you have internal network from the bus 2.5 kilometers if you have a weak network this networks protects these things which are important that you have set sometimes you have to when you have to send uh, heavy files based on mobile network is not sufficient and this network saves you time and money and, and security we can also put that on the uh, in different small towns and for example in Nepal on the market square right now the laser projectors are so are so strong that even during like a overcast day this is how it, what, it, what it looks like in, in an during an overcast day, day you have a very strong um, image you do not need anything special which costs millions of euros a piece of white cloth and, and the projector in a, in a car and you can promote things 
That's why we thought it, it, it should also be a, 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 the bus should be a place for events. You can make events on the on the top of the bus. You can put an orchestra in there. This is all secure. Nobody will fall down. Of course, I mean, if, if they want, they will. However, around around that you can make um, um, a fair or a sort of event. You cannot allow yourself to make a film nobody hears about because putting things on YouTube is like put throwing them into a black hole. But if, I'm not talking about short form because this is the worst category. But even with feature films, films which are made in Poland have no mechanism for promotion. A film in Gdynia because they never understood that the calendar of uh, uh, world events are set up um, is set, has been set for many years caused the fact that nobody important from journalists and it's a group which the, who decide to, to write about films they never come to, to the Gdynia festival Karlowe Vary is three times as powerful festival than the Gdynia festival Gdynia festival is no guarantee but also in Poland Warsaw film got a Grand Prix six seven years I, I wasn't there in this festival I went to Moranov to see that film how you know how many people who were in the in, in the room after they won the award. Three people, including me. They won the, fe the film festival in Gdynia. Festivals stopped being a promotional mechanism anymore. I thought yesterday, I said during my inaugurational address, that in the map of festival I saw in uh, in peace in Polish film Institute that they have two film festivals in Czechowice Dziedzice. They might be interesting, they might be important for the local community. But promotion is extremely important. Forgetting about promotion is a mistake which is fatal and makes the even the successful projects uh, they, 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 are, they are not marketed to the right people. I quite often ask my students, who are these? Who is this film for? Because there is no film for everybody. You have to target your uh, audience, not only for kids, for example. This is also too broad a category. Targeting gives you a bigger chance that the film will reach the right audience. You have a certain you're not an American production and doing a film for everybody is a mistake. Film professions. Yesterday I said a lot and I, we've been under uh, stress, we've been stressing that films should be made in teams but um, indie films have been made quite quite a lot but I told you a lot about the director so far it's good to remember what I told you about that the role of the director who's a god on the set does not work well anymore and creative producer the producer who has some impact Eva Boszczyńska was talking about the emotions I, I was tempted to tell them to ask her how she solved the conflict that arose during the production uh, with Pavlikovsky. I think, that, I think that I didn't even want to ask this question later because some things she would not tell because there are two intimate things and such things, and such things should not be published. However, undoubtedly, and a very important thing is that the partnership between the director and the creative producer should consist in a trust that she undoubtedly has built with Pavlikovsky, and right now they've been cooperating and they still want to cooperate on into the future. It is a certain safety valve that allows this craze of a person who knows everything better and everything that he dreams of in the evening tries to implement on uh, during the next day regardless of whether it's wise or silly quite often we're dealing with the directors that are like spewing ideas on and on they're like a waterfall of ideas killing one idea killing another idea, and it's a very difficult syndrome and you have to fight against it so whatever i so it's all a certain fuse plus creative producer a producer who understands that producing is helping the director regardless 
um, of the fact that they, sh they should be aware that they should the, not too much money should be spent in, in a, on a film. And I've mentioned also also that the budget is also drama. Sorry, sorry, no, no, the filming set, not budget, not budget. The filming set is a dramaturgy. If you want to help the director, you have to help them in such a way as to secure more, more time for the more important things and put them in the in the beginning of the films and because then the, the, there is this magic of the first shooting day once when I was a young man I believe that you have to start from the easiest scene I don't think that anymore I believe that it's not really bad to start with the most difficult scene because the first shooting day is the is, a, is a, something like a moment of birth, something gets born or not. But it's my personal remark, and you could have your own ideas. Of course, I would like to encourage you, when you're looking at a film set, filming set, to look at a certain dramatic structure of this film, what is more important and less important, and devote more time to the more important part. And to describe to the director that making a film is not walking around a beautiful palace. This room is beautiful, and that is beautiful, and this one is fantastic. This is not so. There are more important things and less important things. If we're making an important scene, let's give him more time. Let's give him more coverage. Because these are key scenes for the film. And he may, when he makes subplots, let's push him towards getting things more dense so that he does it much faster so there's not much so much coverage by definition even the most important directors make too much subplots because this this is being charmed by the new orchestra why don't we make films in small teams which do not have this ego which is one name only that Sorry, I came too, too fast. Well, first, the DOP. In a contemporary film, the DOP is a very important person because he's, he's, he's good at technician, you save time on him. In the United States, they don't ask you if he's good or not, if whether but they ask him if he's fast or not. If somebody's fast, it's okay. If he's not, he will not find his place in the system. Rapidity, Rapidity fast, fast, being fast, quickness, quickness saves money. Saves money. And, and this quickness, quickness is more important. Uh, mm, I would, I would, they tr they tr if you, it's more important than the price of the equipment. And they, they try to, they try to kick me out of the first movie, uh, American movie. Uh, um, because I just took what ca one camera and they needed two cameras on the set because that's what what the insurance required so they thought I'm an amateur and they want to keep me out and then I realized that when when I have like a, some special stars in a film uh, I have to spend more money on the lights it doesn't matter if I spend if I use it or not I need to get your get more lighting just to, for it to be there but don't you think it's the same thing with your movies don't you pay for the lighting uh, that never gets to the set does anybody check it uh, what does have you ever checked what rental wrote down for you and what was used Did, have you checked which tools were you were driven around in all this in those trucks that every every department has their own ladders, their their, their own tools, um, coffee machines, etc., etc. And in general, in general, they're trans transporting around uh, double tools and empty like pure air. In Mexico, when I was making a film, there's only one technical crew. There are no electricians or grips or whoever. Because there's no need for them to be. This has been obsolete for a long time. Electricians work inside. If you have a small inside, the groups have nothing to do because you put up um, a tripod because there's a small small indoors area. Um, sometimes you put a certain things like a butterfly on the outside. In Mexico, it's not like that. They make a lot of American films in Mexico because and they like to make films there because the, because. Because the, the 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 Native Americans they were like they were lighting fast. The groups are helping with the cables and
the grips are helping with the cables uh, during the lighting and the other way around the uh, the the gaffers are helping with the camera with when there's no much, when there's no much the, the pr work with with lighting there's no problem with people doubling that you have doubled uh, requirements uh, they have like you will have the, you will have the specialists coming for for s with this if there's a specialized grip you will have to have specialists in a way Dlaczego tak jest? No bo związki zawodowe. W Stanach nic z takiego nie można zrobić. Ja posłałem elektryka, ja posłałem elektryka wiem, na dachu wieżowca w Nowym Jorku zdjęcia i posłałem elektryka na drugi wieżowiec, bo tam miałem światło ustawione, żeby się tą stronę. To było skomplikowane, bo deszcz, tam jeżdżę, lała się woda. I przez i przez Woki Toki, jak on tą lampę przestawia, mówię mu, nie, wiesz, zostaw tą lampę, przesuń tą zasłonkę tego murzyna, jak to tam kiedyś mówię, prawie <śmiech> E, I na to, i na to on mówi przez te łokitoki. To świetny pomysł, ale to nie jest mój departament. No nie ma prawa tego ruszyć. Czyli znowu musiałem posłać gripowca, który zjechał windą do wieżowca przez drugiego, z windą do góry, żeby przesunąć. Znaczy zrezygnowałem z tego, nie wiedziałem, jak to zrobić, nie miałem czasu na to, tak? Więc, więc tego, typu tego typu rzeczy ciągle się dzieją i warto przeanalizować naszą produkcję w postaci, w postaci odchudzenia, połączenia, połączenia zawodów, ale też prześwietlenia zawodów pod kątem, pod kątem, pod kątem nowej, technologii. nowej technologii. Wracam do operatora. Operator jest szalenie ważny, nie wiem dlaczego przerwałem ten temat, bo mówiłem wtedy o oszczędnościach. Operator, operator przygotowuje, pracuje na planie, w tym czasie scenograf przygotowuje następny obieg zdjęciowy, i e, jedziemy na drugi dzień na ten obiekt sieciowy i tam praca zaczyna się od postawienia światła. Czyli przez definicję od razu na początku... By, by definition from the first, very first day of shooting we lose... Well, the standard is one hour. In the United States they give us one and a half hour for lighting of the set, depending on the, on the size. Why aren't we working in a system that I've mentioned with, in an anecdote with Natalie Portman? Why there is no other cinematographer who's sort of shooting tales of the scenes? Why, why 50 man crew is watching a, a filmmaker shooting uh, the close up to a, I don't know, boiling soup or something else. It's an absurd. It's, we need somebody to shoot those things. We do not need all those things to be doing that, the same thing. The second, the second uh, cinematographer can be very, very useful also in the preparation of the lighting of the next scene. This has to be some sort of a team, the, the cinematographers, people who like each other, who know how to talk to one another. And when we get into the set, the main DOP has already the light prepared. And if we calculate with 10 uh, filming objects, um, the amount of time saved, it's one filming day. Just like that. Small movies. I don't, feel I don't feel that set, set designer is a, is a bad profession, but in many cases set designer only chooses the locations and he just moves, move, moves around the, the furniture or, or paints the walls. The, the possibility, especially in small movies, films, getting uh, uh, somebody who's called the visual director, somebody who's responsible for the vision, who has such s security and works with all this uh, and works at the level of previs. He works with all this machinery of planning and building a certain vision based on some mood boards. Maybe in such movies the, cinema, the set designer is not necessary. We, we can save this money for something else. We Not to mention that in modern, in contemporary films, if it's a modern 
uh, contemporary psychological drama. Uh, the role of a costume designer is the, the selection of the things that an actor has in his wardrobe. Of course, I, I'm not trying to undermine. Uh, people say that uh, I would like to kick out everybody from the apart from the DOP. Well, maybe. It is not. I'm not trying really to. Oh, sorry, that was a joke. These sometimes these professions are necessary, but you know perfectly well, manipulated different different forms for uh, Polish Film Institute and other other institutions. How many professions are included there, and which you use only to secure to, to, to get some financial security you cannot get from other sources. Because it is ba based on American um, software, and those are built um, basing on uh, systems which makes no sense in, in European conditions. I remember when I was working on King Arthur in Ireland, and after four shooting days, we were one week late, sorry, one day late, and Vice President of Disney came and he looked and observed our work. And that was in the afternoon. At some point, at some point I, I got information from the other crew that they needed an additional camera. So I added up. Uh, so I went up to one of my cameras and I asked the guy to go to the other crew to use the camera. And at this moment, this vice president of Disney called. After a moment, he, my telephone started to call. My agent started to call from Los Angeles, asking me why um, did I send this, I, this idiot had 50 meters to me, and he called my agent to ask me this question. Can you imagine that absurd? And this is a true, true anecdote. And it's not a story uh, I made up. We copying this American system, we quite often spend money senselessly. And it's good to think about it. It's good to think how you can use that money in a more logical way and more, more sort of sensible way. I have a few anecdotes, but uh, I would like to first of all uh, encourage you to build teams. I was born. As a cinematographer, thanks to long year cooperation with Zanussi, we are on two on two extremes of the scale. He's a he's a he's a very focused uh, mind and and very controlled mind, and I'm on the other side of the spectrum. And we were making film after film. It allowed me to develop naturally. Before that, as I said, my profession is a profession of a prostitute. I do what the client expects. Of course, this is also devastating for your own de development. And as Anansi taught me to call the spade a spade, and I, I always say, I said, this fuck is fucking better than the other fucking thing. But I could not. Say, I said, Swavik, he said, why? And then I had to explain, and I started to learn to call things what they are and be more precise in my speech. This way of building teams is a necessity, not to mention I believe in new media. The world is changing, and uh, there is a new audience young people who are playing computer games that don't want to just to be takers and viewers, they want to co uh, participate. We also put a lot of stress on cooperation between the, the developers and filmmakers. There are, there are two ways of thinking here. And when building a film crew, we should think that we're building a certain artistic um, Personality. It's a team that should be supplementing one another because only in that way we secure corners and weak spots. This idea, this idea I was talking about, I told you to you about, um, was born during the film Spring Open. This one, this guy is a double Oscar winner. His wife was a film, film Spring Open producer. She's uh, his wife now. Juliette Binoche uh, visited us is in the bus. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. And, this and this is the picture that we've seen already. And of course, I'm not convinced that I'm 
and I'm absolutely sure that the, this is the end of the cinemas because this is the end of, of any new technology. And you have to be aware that everything ends pretty quickly. I know about this very well, that if we won't be uh, following the novelties, this is how our programs and, and the, the times, this is what our programs will look like. I'm ready to answer all your, all your questions. I'm sorry it was a bit long. But before I finish and I will, and before I ask you to uh, to ask me questions, I would like to ask you to to select from among the uh, those people around you who are interested, among you who are interested. I would I would like to have a short a tour around Cinebus where I will practically show you uh, elements that we have built, what it looks like. I will answer your questions in location, of course, and maybe you would have some ideas because this is what I count on. We have a, proto we have a prototype built in the Cinebus uh, of the virtual film studio for making car, uh, car chases. In Cinebus, you can put in the car inside and you can do. Of course, you will not be able to, to make dialogue scenes in, in uh, motorways. We have a prototype which our chief technician built. And it worked pretty well in tests, so it's also a part of Cinebus. The possibility of doing green screen things, not only typical things like what's outside of the window, but also d dynamic one like driving the car around, which is very often needed and necessary. Thank you very much. I'm willing to answer your questions. I'm deaf, so you have to ask your questions on the, with the help of the microphone. Thank you for your lecture, because last year when I was uh, shown around Cinebus, I got only some small um, sample of all that knowledge. Now I do have the feeling that that it worked. And I think that the producers group, as a producers group, we have to uh, agree for the, for the touring of Cinebus to experience. I'll tell you. Cinebus uh, functions well mm, in terms of education. We go to festivals, to Görlitz, to Germany. We've been there three times. Here we had some, like in Wawel, in Ostruda, we were quite often. However, in production wise, apart from small forms, especially here, it was not used. It, it, it has been built. We do not need to earn money with this. We're ready to rent it for not maybe not, not maybe not free because you have to learn for this for the servicing and so equipment. We do have some equipment ourselves. You will get that, you will get that bus for half free. We will not give uh, Cinebus for advertising because this is not right. But if the project is interesting and it will be interesting for us. That for the fact that you, I don't know, put your put our logo as a partner, honorary co-producers, without any participation in the uh, in the profits, we're ready to give it to you because truly, I, I can tell you frankly, why Cinebus doesn't work? Work. I mean, there's a lot of black PR because Cinebus. In a, in a in a way, it it up, it destroys the current the current system. The current system is the is the system of small companies. I do understand that Henry Edinak, who's been doing films with me as a uh, as a sharpener, he does not earn money f through his money. He from from, from his uh, salary. It's because he rents himself and his car. And if we forced him 
to work on Cinebus, he loses a lot of uh, a big part of his income. If an editor bought a software and he has some room to edit there, he calculates, he can calculate too. Not to, mention, not to mention computers and all that. We do not have like some super super reference monitors, but they are the same. So whatever is watched by the producer in his office, in, or a director on the set, or an editor is the same. These are the same colors. And the, in, Poland, in Poland, everything is built on small servicing companies. And one of the, big, one of the biggest companies that were built in a in, uh, lighting company in Poland, I will not mention the main, I, it was created only because, because the, I asked the guy to, to I took the guy to, to Western Films and and um, and he created a company out of this. And every year we had a truck of lighting equipment, and he gave us for free. But he said, "But don't ask me to cooperate with grips. I will not do that ever." Okay, I do understand that because this is against a certain set environment. So Cinebus can work only if there is a crew which will be ready to work in such a system. There are, there are two of us, Marta and me, and I not I don't live in Poland even, so it's an absurd. We're not able to do any more. Yes, last year we've built the, the solar panel. We're trying to improve things, but to build around it a crew, it goes beyond our possible capabilities because you have to be on the location. I must tell you frankly so that it's, you, you do not have the feeling that you take the, the, the Cinebus. We did not use uh, one occasion, because one lady wanted to want to take um, a Cinebus from us because she wanted to have a free camper. I decided, well, that's stupid. And I decided, okay, let it stand in my backyard. Of course, there, it is quite convenient for an actor, but this is not a camper. But of course, we can, introduce we can introduce various modifications. It doesn't have to be used in this way or another. It can be a, like a technical bus in a bigger film, yes. This model, that this model that I presented, it's not the only model of using the, the Cinebus. My question was about financing, but you answered it partly. That I understand that it, there is a possibility of renting out Cinebus, if we like the project, if we have the project. And what about the servicing of the uh, operating? Can we use the people who already know? know how to service the how to use the cinebus yes this is also a complicated matter because Pavel, who knows cinebus very well he's a driver at the same time he's a great driver with the license and unfortunately he works in post tv and and they like him so much that uh, he doesn't get let go anymore he said that he's here for the last time because he can't do it anymore but right now my former assistant, who's um, retired right now, he's not a driver, he, you have to rent um, the driver, but when Pavel started to work, he wasn't the driver uh, neither, he went and made the course to be able to drive it, and he earned small money because we pay him uh, for driving and uh, maintaining the Cinebus. Yes, it is necessary. Cinebus is rented out as long as... As we, ha as, we ha as we have our own supervisor, who knows his stuff, yes, because you, you have like servers there, you have uh, optical fibers, fiber cables, we have air conditioning, it's all there. So we have to have someone 
Castle. We've been to Wavell Castle this right now. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a really nice uh, uh, air conditioning that we have there. Also, the tent has heating there. This heating is unfortunately based on the engine, so it's based on diesel engine. But in the winter, you can you can work with this. The generator is not that big, and so it's useful only for small sets. But it 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 can it can serve as the whole of the cinebus. If there's for example, there's for example a commercial production which would uh, judge that. Should should pay, us should pay us for cinebus. All the, money that, all the money that we get, we're reinvesting back. I do not have, do not have any needs like that. And uh, film spring open works very well. So we, well, there's no need. This is a studio bus to convince you that certain changes are worth trying and to build a new model of production. You know very well, you know very well that it will bring savings so you can make more with the same money. Thank you, thank you very much. I know it was a bit lengthy. Thanks. Thanks.